Welcome to Angles and Acid, where we learn things maths and science. So today we're going to do a little bit about microscopes. It's not my specialty, but we have learned a, a thing or two in our classes lately. So I want to share that for the kids who've been missing uh, at the start of the year. So here's our microscope. When you uh, lift a microscope, they're all going to be a bit different, but they generally have an upper region here, which we call the arm or the handle. Really good solid connection, so it's, it's safe to grab it there, and it's always a good idea to support it underneath on the base. This is the correct way of holding on to it. Uh, I have seen students in the past who have picked them up from, the, from this part of the microscope. That's not as secure. So this one here actually comes right out. So imagine what would happen if you grabbed that and it came undone. Also, this comes undone. I think we need to get a close-up stand of that. Can we just... Very satisfying. For that reason, you have to go by the arm and the base when you, when you lift it and put it away. Uh, we're going to walk you through how, how to create a wet mount and then we'll go over the process of how to focus this thing. So you're going to have two items to create a wet mount. So we got, this is called a uh, glass slide, the cleaner the better. This is pretty big, pretty durable, um, and we are going to put our specimen. Specimen is the thing that you, you're actually trying to look at. So, and we are going to make a wet mount, so I need to make it wet, so I'm just going to add some moisture to this. I suspect the moisture is there just to help flatten it out once we put the cover slip on top. This is the cover slip. It's kind of the size of my thumb. Um, and we are going to very slowly and gently uh, rest it over the top. So we're going to hinge this, we're going to flap it down. If you need to, you can use tweezers or a toothpick to do this. So I just want to do this really slowly. And if I've done it correctly, I shouldn't have any air bubbles trapped underneath. Now, my wet mount is complete. We can now turn our attention to the microscope. There's a little bit of excess moisture here. Let me just grab a bit of paper towel. Okay, so here's my wet mat. I'm going to put it onto, this is called the stage. Okay, this is where we stage our specimen. And I want to get roughly centered up uh, underneath the microscope. Um, you'll notice that on microscopes of this type, um, they have a bit of a rotating turret here. I don't know the name of the turret part uh, uh, particularly, but these are the lenses. We call them objective lenses. I think that's become, um, it's a, a German origin. So we want to pick the one with the lowest magnification as possible. If you can't quite read it, sometimes I've seen them written underneath on the, on the, on the upper rim. Uh, if you still can't see anything there, try and find the one that's the skinniest and the shortest. That's generally the one with the lowest magnification. So I want to rotate that one into position. So it should be right underneath there. We need to get some light underneath. Now, currently, I don't have, the, uh, have a light source right now, but if I had like a window, I could get some light and I can angle it just right with this mirror. If you don't have access to good window light, because it's currently very rainy outside today, um, you can supplement the light by using a lamp. And we do have lamps in the lab for that reason. So we're just going to angle this and you want to try and get the light to show up here as a, as a bright circle right, up, right on your specimen coming up through. You also want to try and look at specimens that are relatively transparent for this to work. If they're not transparent, you have to shine light from above and bounce it off the surface. To focus the mechanism, I'm going to bring my attention to the side. I'm not putting my eye through the piece. You can look at my ugly face, sorry, my handsome face. Uh, can you move out the way of the background? So I'm going to bring the lens as close as I can to the specimen without cracking it. And I'm looking at the side so I can see that I'm not cracking it. Now. To focus it, I bring my attention up to the eyepiece. This eyepiece is also called an ocular lens. I put my eye to the lens and I'm going to, I prefer to have the spine of the microscope towards me. And that way I can use two hands and slowly turn it so that the lens is moving further and further away. I have found that usually the first centimeter or so is where you find your focus. And once you start to see something, you would turn your attention from the coarse focusing knob. That's always a larger one. Sometimes they're over here. Sometimes they're actually on the arm itself. Whichever the bigger knob is, that's the coarse focus knob. That's used to make large changes. So if I turn them, they move a large amount. And then once you've found roughly where your focus is at, you can turn your attention to the, to the narrower knobs. These are the fine tuning knobs. And you use this for fine adjustment and then you should have your specimen. Thank you very much. See you later, bye. Yes, you can come in. I'm just doing a YouTube video here right now. So if you can be nice and quiet, it'd be great. Welcome nameless students, who will be remain nameless. Right. Except for this one, which I just called. Nameless student. <laughs> nameless student number one. Bring their textbook. Who didn't, or did. did. Excellent, that's what I want to see. Students who actually show up with stuff that this should be bringing to class. 